This week's blog post is the fourth in my series about a visit to the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston in August 2020. I've posted earlier on my five favorites from the Gardner Museum, but those were chosen from artworks I found on the net. In August 2020, I visited the Gardner for the first time in decades. The introduction to this series is on my website, and you can find that and other posts on it by looking for Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in the tag cloud. Up this week first is the early Italian room. The core of Isabella's collection is Italian art, including, as in this room, late Gothic as well as Renaissance art. The furniture and decorative objects, however, reflect her eclectic travels elsewhere in Europe and in Egypt, the Middle East, and Asia. The works in the Euro Italian room are mostly, but not entirely, earlier than those in the Raphael room, which we looked at last week. As I did for that room, I am putting the works in chronological order and adding labels, which would annoy Isabella. This piece is by Simone Martini, Virgin and Child with Saints Paul, Lucy, Catherine, and John the Baptist, circa 1320. Martini probably studied with either Duccio da Buoninsegna or Giotto, a marvelously innovative artist. You can see Innovators in Painting, Chapter 15, on Giotto. Martini, however, took a different turn. He became one of the most influential early artists in the international Gothic style, which spread throughout Europe in the 14th and 15th centuries. International Gothic emphasized courtly sophistication and elegance rather than three-dimensional realism. Next up, on the left, Fra Angelico's Dormition and Assumption of the Virgin, 1424 to 34, so it's about a hundred years later than the one we just saw. Fra Angelico's career overlapped with that of Masaccio, whose works, with their solid three-dimensional figures and mathematically calculated perspective, harken back to Giotto. Masaccio's works are considered the beginning of Italian Renaissance in painting. See Innovators in Painting, chapters 18 to 19 on Masaccio. Some of Fra Angelico's later works do show hints of Masaccio's influence, but mostly Fra Angelico leans toward international Gothic. The colors in the painting at the gardener, that pale pink, blue, green, red, and that heavy gold leaf are typical of the international Gothic style. And so is the sort of greenish cast on the faces, which are, is also visible on the Martini painting that we just looked at. It's probably the result of Byzantine influence. Also on this slide, Piero della Francesca's Hercules, around 1470. Usually, Hercules is shown older and far more muscular. There's a famous classical sculpture called the Hercules Farnese that shows him that way. Here he's identified as Hercules by his lion skin and club, but he's much younger. Piero della Francesca actually painted this for his own home, but unfortunately we don't know what the young Hercules represented to him. This fresco was once high on a wall in Piero's house, and he chose to show the figure in steep perspective. In fact, Piero was so fascinated with perspective that in the 1470s or the 1480s he wrote a whole treatise on it called On Perspective in Painting. Getting an actual fresco for her museum was quite a coup for Isabella. In fresco, the paint is bonded with the plaster, so part of the wall has to be detached if you're going to move the painting. Hercules is the only Piero della Francesca painting in the United States, and one of the few Italian frescoes from the Renaissance. Isabella placed this work quite high on the wall so that the steep perspective still works. And then there's this bronze head, which I haven't been able to find on the gardener's site, so I don't know who made it or what the date is. The tilt of it is rather lovely and evocative. It reminds me of Donatello's sculpture of uh, Niccolò da Uzzano, which dates to around 1432. I've shown you that in the center. And then we go back to the staircase as we head up to the third floor. On the third floor is the Veronese room. The focal point of this room is a painting by an artist who worked in Venice, a city that Isabella loved. As usual, however, she didn't confine the room to a particular period, place, or style. The walls are covered in stamped and painted leather panels that come from Italy, Spain, and the Netherlands. There are also several late 19th century paintings on the walls, including a couple by James McNeil Whistler. All right, back to the painting itself. While the Gardner Museum was under construction, Isabella acquired the Coronation of Hebe, 
then attributed to the noted Venetian painter Veronese. It's now attributed to his studio rather than to Veronese's hand. Isabella ordered an elaborate frame created for it and installed it on the ceiling of this room. In this room, as everywhere else in the gardener, the ceilings are always worth looking at. Next up on the left is a seat from an early 18th century gig, a two-wheeled carriage that was designed to carry only one person. The Asian figures set up against a deep red ground are typical of Venetian furniture that was imitating Chinese lacquer work. After a stroke paralyzed her in 1919, Isabel was carried around her museum in this chair. And on the right is Francesco Guardi's view of a part of Venice. Guardi and Canaletto are both famous for painting views of Venice for the tourist trade. I love Canaletto's work. It seems to have more, more verve, more light than Guardi often does, but occasionally Guardi comes close, as he does here. You need to look at the good picture on the Gardner's website to really get it. And wrapping up for this week, on the left is a sedan chair for when you wanted to be carried about by people rather than horses. I suppose that would actually make sense in Venice, where the canals make space for streets very limited. This sedan chair is painted wood with glass, leather, and upholstery, and it was created in northern Italy around 1770 to 1785. And on the right, back to the courtyard, which runs through the center of the building. And next week, we will continue with another room on the third floor. DianeDurantiWriter.com has hundreds of posts on sculpture, painting, and my other obsessions. To join the free Sunday Recommendations email list, visit the URL that's on the screen or email me. And you can say, well done, Diane. I really appreciate that. Or support my work and receive rewards by means of the tip jar on DianeDurantiWriter.com. Thanks as always for listening.